Okay, so I honestly didn't know if I was going to start this video off by stating the obvious. I mean, we all know what I'm about to say. But what is the point in not? What am I just gonna do? Edge my opinion? What is the fun in that? The reanimated X-Men 97, or the rebooted X-Men 97, or X-Men Season 4, the classic X-Men 97, whatever you want to call it, is absolutely incredible. And what's even crazier is that it's a show that never really even seemed like it has hit its peak. Easily the best product to come out of the MCU post-endgame, if not a top 5 or even top 3 production all time for Marvel Studios as a whole, a show that unfortunately, because there were some hidden gems, but in the same breath, fortunately puts the Fox X-Men Universe movies to shame and pretty much bans them to the Shadow Realm as a whole from an entertainment and rewatchability point of view. Because while yes, we as an audience, and honestly Hollywood in this instance too, was lucky enough to find some perfect casting choices with Wolverine, Professor X, and Magneto, a statement that I would say holds true for both iterations of the franchise, the mishandlings of certain character stories and story arcs, blatant character assassinations of not only some of our protagonists, but villains as well, and CGI that sometimes looked as if it was straight out of a PS2 video game, and not the good ones, why would you watch those movies instead of this? As someone who did not watch the original show when it was coming out because it was before my time and I definitely was not sentient enough to even comprehend what would have been going on on my screen. So as a noob, I don't want to speak for the people that have seen the OG show and are jumping back into it with pre-established character relationships and knowledge of the narrative overall from where the show was left off. But what I can and will say if you simply have any knowledge of who the X-Men are and what the X-Men stand for, then I promise you, you will thoroughly enjoy yourself from beginning to end with this show. Not only does X-Men 97 add fuel to the fire to an already raised question that so many people in, I guess, what do we call it? The superhero community have discussed, should there be more animated superhero projects made for the mainstream audience? With movies and shows such as Miles Morales' Spider-Man movies, Invincible, What If, even though I haven't seen a single episode of those seasons, because to me it just looks like multi-million dollar Marvel fanfic, but maybe I'm missing out. But now with the addition of X-Men 97, there's just more and more examples piling up and adding credibility to the people pushing that narrative. But more importantly, it shows that even animation aside, that with people behind the scenes that genuinely care about the product, the source material, the audience, and their own image and self-respect, it's very easy to craft a complete and competently told story, riddled with intense and high-octane action sequences, tightly woven character bonds, character growth, and relationships that stem from intelligent character writing, stakes that feel genuine and actually hold true to the characters and the narrative overall, a world that feels fleshed out in a place that feels like people with differing ideologies and mindsets could actually exist, and speaking of differing mindsets within the audience, for the people that care, this is a show that has a message to tell without throwing that said message in your face hypothetically, I guess. But at the end of the day, this is the X-Men we are talking about here. So if you thought you were coming here for an X-Men pie without a grand helping of some message, you got the wrong superhero group. But as much as I could go ahead and glaze the show right now, as always, of course, Let's talk. Hmm, it's kind of interesting because I'm not really sure if I should do a spoiler warning here for the people that haven't seen the OG show. Nah, there's no point. If you were going to go watch the original show, you would have done that by now. Sorry, mates. The best part about an X-Men production, the narrative itself is always more than likely pretty straightforward. And that is the case here. X-Men 97 follows the X-Men after the death of Professor Xavier in the finale of the OG show. Within the will left over from his passing, Scott and the team are shocked to find out that the new leader of the X-Men will be Magneto, of course Charles' longest and best friend, but in that same breath, enemy of the Earth and X-Men overall. With Magneto just as shocked as the rest of the team and frankly the audience, Magneto vows to honor the legacy of his fallen friend and plans to follow in the footsteps towards human and mutant coexistence. But because that means there would be a show with no conflict if people weren't brain dead, that is no fun. So you watch as people make many, many stupid decisions in order to piss Magneto off and well, 
you can already tell where the story is going with this one. With a multitude of other character side plots going on simultaneously and working in tandem with the overall story that I won't really get into because I don't want to go into spoilers on that, the show wraps up in an epic finale between the humans and mutants as yet again a fight for each other's species threatens to wipe out both in their entirety. Obviously for the longtime subscribers of this channel, it will come to absolutely nobody's surprise how impressed I was just from a character writing standpoint alone. As mentioned before, even as someone who had no pre-established knowledge of the lore or character relationships from the original three seasons, the character arcs, character growth, and most importantly, the character power scaling was off the charts and extremely spot on with this iteration. Gambit, Nightcrawler, Rogue, and especially Storm and Cyclops were standout characters to me as characters that received much needed respect and on-screen buffs compared to their other on-screen counterparts. It was truly glorious to watch our X-Men cook the way we all know they can. But what I would say was an even more impressive showcasing of the skills of the team behind this show was the fact that we were able to handle such a simple message and theme of division, which of course that is what the X-Men are all about. It's just easier said than done. And watching the progression of how far Magneto is pushed to the edge by his former enemies, and now even his allies that still can't see eye to eye with his vision, is absolutely gripping to watch. Simply watching the worst domino effect of all time until finally being pushed to a conclusion that, quite frankly, most already knew was pretty inevitable. What some noobs would probably classify as well-written as a Thanos-level villain, but the OGs know that Magneto has been giving us this sauce. Obviously, to touch on the animation a little bit, as someone who mostly watches anime in my free time, I'm becoming more and more impressed with the animation quality and level of effort that's being put into some of these shows over here in the West, especially from a brand and franchise as mainstream as X-Men. The animation is so crisp, it's smooth and colorful, easily blending in the different animation techniques to really deliver us the audience the most engaging experience we could have in the comfort of our own homes. Again, it's extremely impressive. Overall, because I feel like I have already said too much, and I know that there are actually people out there that have either given up on Marvel Studios, don't like animated projects, or don't have a Disney Plus subscription, which is actually pretty understandable, that haven't seen this show yet. Which is a double negative, because not only are you taking away from your own entertainment, but at the same time, not letting Marvel know about the good products that they do have. We as an audience can't complain about the poop on the floor, without also praising and promoting the right products. It's why the audience to studio relationship right now is in such a fractured state. Yes, it is obvious that they have no idea what we want. And unless we tell them, there's no way for the blokes like Bob Iger, Kevin Feige, Kathleen Kennedy, or whoever else to know what we want. And what we want is more competently written and engaging shows like X-Men 97, a show riddled with fantastic characters, intense stakes, a well-crafted narrative, gorgeous animation, and a show that we as the masses can confidently stand behind. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024 and honestly, I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would go say watch some of those reviews even though you're just gonna see where I've ranked them here, but I mean, you can still just go do your boy a solid. With that being said, I'm pretty comfortable and confident standing on business and saying that X-Men 97 is cinema on the small screen, adding yet another superhero show to be put in this category. And what's even crazier is that with The Boys Season 4 coming out and even Deadpool and Wolverine, even though what I'm saying is still a pretty high bar, I still can't confidently say that this superhero show will be the last to actually touch this category. We'll see. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.